Hey there, this is Phyllis Sinclair, and you're listening to Native Americana Audio Cafe with your man, Keith Sikola. It's good to have you on the Audio Cafe today, so tell people who you are. <laughs> well, my name is Phyllis Sinclair. I, uh, I'm Cree. I'm from, uh, originally from northern Manitoba, way up on the coast of the Hudson Bay. And um, I got into, uh, I'm a singer songwriter. I'm kind of slowing things down as time goes on, but new stuff comes out that makes me say, no, you have to write about this. So maybe we're not as slowing things down as we think we are. But anyway, I, uh, I got into singing, uh, singer songwriting um, way back in the uh, late 19, 90s. I'd always written and always sang, but I never got into uh, thinking about writing anything down seriously or recording anything seriously because I, that wasn't where I thought I was going. I thought I was writing about some issues and some people that were on my mind. And uh, my husband said to me, why don't you just record that? And um, I never really felt like I was a recording artist, but I said, okay, for posterity, let's do this. So we did it. And that's where we've ended up today. So I guess it's all right. <laughs> How has this uh, virus and this whole sh lot, um, stay at home thing affected you and, and your music? Wow. You know, it's funny. Um, somebody said to me, it was uh, during a pandemic, way back during Shakespeare's time, that Shakespeare actually wrote King Lear. And uh, I thought, great, you know, this will, I'll use this time to maybe inspire me and get me writing. But there was something in the early days of the pandemic when it was first, um, when you're first told to hunker down and stuff like that, that I think there was a certain degree of, um, people weren't sure what was going on. Uh, there's, a, you know, some fear and what, you know, what's happening, where are we going? So that really affected me. Like I couldn't sit down and write the way I thought I would be able to, because I just found myself not in the right space. So it really hasn't affected uh, my writing in that way. But as time has gone on and we're sort of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel a little bit, um, I think that's kind of loosening up my, my spirit to sort of start, thinking about things that I would like to say again. So um, musically, it hasn't really affected it too much. But I have to say, um, you know, the whole staying home and that kind of thing has affected me in other ways, like putting on 10 pounds. <laughs> I, I like uh, you're talking about the way that uh, fellow musicians are kind of reacting um, using Zoom and using platforms, other media platforms to play music? Yes. Um, here in my town where I live, um, we have a group of musicians that um, meet every Tuesday night and we just get together and we'll play whatever's on our mind. If it's a cover tune or something that we're working on, just to get together and feel supported. Um, but of course, with this whole pandemic, we haven't been able to meet. So we have decided to use the same platform, Zoom, to uh, sit down on Tuesday nights and uh, just sing and it's funny what's coming out of it because a lot of people aren't singing their own stuff but the stuff that they're singing are things that are really hopeful i'm trying to think of a couple of songs that have come through our little circle this last week one of course is always um don't worry be happy and uh, there's another louis armstrong song i can't remember which one it is it's a wonderful world like these types of songs are coming out and they really are warm and hopeful and i think that's what we need right now a lot of my music, and I shouldn't say unfortunately, you know, I, I have this conviction in my heart and my conviction really has been, and that's why I got into this whole songwriting thing, was to um, take my music to an audience that would be able to, to have a tunnel to look inside um, First Nations life, Aboriginal life, Indigenous life, whatever you want to call it, and see something that they weren't able to see before because People on the outside often just see the stereotypical stuff, right? Well, come on inside and let me show you about people that I know. That's how this all got started. So during this Zoom time, a lot of my stuff, I've been singing uh, cover tunes because my stuff is meant for another purpose, I think. But maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? Well, it's, I, I like to... Um ask musicians how you know it affected them and I, i'm sure you had the gigs 
planned and we had recorded a, a bunch a, a small demo down here at the, the um during the christmas time era um and uh you're getting ready i'm sure to get behind some of these and keep working on them yes i am I'm, I'm still working on them i want to refine them a little bit more and of course with this whole like as soon as i got back i don't know if you recall keith i i worked with you down in um, in tempe and as soon as i got home i got off the flight and i like two days later i had this terrible laryngitis and it lasted it lasts i think i just got rid of it maybe a month and a half ago like it lasted a long time so there was nothing i could do i couldn't sing so I didn't really pick up my guitar much. And really, I was on the couch quite a bit trying to recuperate. So I never got much done. I'm hoping now that the weather is warming up and uh, there's beginning to be a little bit of movement that I can start doing some more work on these songs that have been playing on my heart for the last couple of years. I've been um, really uh, singing in, in, in my mind, uh, Blankets and Stone. You couldn't play it for, for us, could you? <laughs> I can try. I'll tell right. you. Would you try? <laughs> Give it a try. Let's see if I've got my key. Bang, bang, blankets and stones. No redemption when a blindfold has holes. Cover up the stains with gallows and ropes. Forgive the doubt in your soul. Lay it down in blankets and stones. Another one gone. Another walks free. One mother cries, how can this be? Thank you. That's just a little piece of it. There's more to it, but I didn't want to prolong it. That's that's excellent, and your voice sounds in fine form, Phyllis. And Thank you. I, I just love the metaphors in that song. Tell me about them a little bit, about the lyrics. Sure. Um, well, about, I think it's two years ago now, I wrote this song in 2018 um, during the winter because we had uh, a case here in Canada, in Saskatchewan, where a, some First Nations boys went on to a farmer's land. And we're not quite sure what the story is, but nonetheless, um, a young man 
um, lost his life. He was shot and um, killed on this farmland and um, he was unarmed. So anyway, this case went to trial and the shooter was acquitted. So people couldn't understand it, why this young boy who was just in the prime of his life, I can't remember how old he was, but just a young man, um, was shot and nothing was done about it. It was almost like a vigilante justice and there was um, quite a bit of, um, you know, disconcernment as you can imagine on this whole issue. And um, then it was just a couple of days later that the uh, an, a, announcement came down that another uh, person had been acquitted on charges of um, killing a young First Nations woman in Winnipeg. Um, her body was found in the Red River and um, they couldn't prove anything. And so he walked free. So you have two cases where two First Nations people are, are their lives are taken and there's absolutely nobody taking responsibility anywhere. Now, there had to be a killer somewhere. Somebody's got to take responsibility. Why not? And so I say, you know, bang, bang, blankets and stones, no redemption when a blindfold has holes because, of course, you know, the justice imagery that we have is this lady with blindfolds so that she can make a judgment that is um, fair. But in this case, you know, the, the blindfold had holes is what I say. So hopefully we can change these things by writing this, this kind of music and getting people to think a little bit more about, about where we need to go to make sure that everybody has um, fairness and equality when it comes to, to this. Well, I think it's a, no, thank you for educating us, you know, in, in a gentle, gentle, in a, in a mother's way with your uh, beautiful voice and your chords and great rhythm, just a great, great rhythm. Yeah, so I know you did uh, today's uh, uh, Missing and Murdered, uh, people wear red in honor. And uh, I was wearing this because uh, Lucinda Williams signed the back of it. I want to honor you in that uh, songwriting vein of, you know, vital songwriters and I, I know some of the other songs you worked on um down here uh we had a lot of fun and, and it's a singer songwriter uh session that you came down and uh and you laid some tracks down and yeah and, you know i i just I, I love that group of, of songs and and i guess the session was a great songwriting session you know that you know, it was, and I'm one of those people who, I guess maybe, I don't know if it's because of my age or my life experience, probably a little bit of everything, but I've always believed that things happen for a reason beyond what I can understand. And going down to spend time with you, I think was more about um, feeling and uh, feeling that it's okay to play with music and sound and not be so uptight about it. Like, I think the big thing that I walked away from, I know we spent all this time in, in the studio and we did all these recordings and we layered things and it was great and we had a good time, but I was watching you. I was watching you and I was watching your approach to music and um, you know, uh, some of the things that would come out of your mouth and, and you would just kind of roll with them. And I thought, that's kind of what I need to do. And I think that was my big lesson for being down there was, when I write, I tend to write with such purpose that I forget to just relax and just kind of um, let, let play, relax and play, because I take it so seriously that I, you know, the, the freedom to play and just have fun with it kind of goes, gets, gets lost a little bit. So I think that was the big thing for me, was coming down and spending time with another artist and seeing how another artist comes at this this work and um i'm so excited to get these songs out they probably won't be out now till fall but that's fine they'll get out when they're meant to be so thank you uh, well you wrote uh the song about your daughter the um yes yes um <clears throat> do you do that I, one like that yeah yeah i um i did this yeah, I'll tell a little bit about it is um, I'm sure you have them in the in the US as well, but we have um, an organization here called uh, 
uh, Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women. It's a support group for families and also just for everybody to get involved in to bring some light into what happened to these hundreds, if not thousands of missing and murdered Aboriginal women that where the cases are still open and they haven't been closed. And we still have uh, ongoing um, new things coming up all the time. And it made me wonder, why is it that um, women, and in this case, Aboriginal women are such easy targets, like do we not mean anything to anybody? Are we that uh, valueless? So anyway, uh, the whole topic makes people very uncomfortable. And um, so I wrote this song called uh, Unforgotten Lullaby, because I don't think these women should be forgotten. And they won't be forgotten. Um, we have this whole red dress campaign down here, <clears throat> which uh, people will hang red dresses in memory of missing and murdered First Nations women. But when I, when I wanted to sit down and write about, write about this whole issue, I wasn't sure how to come at it. But I thought, this is an uncomfortable song. And I want people to feel uncomfortable because you shouldn't just listen to a topic like this and go, oh, what a pretty song. <laughs> so, you know, I really wanted to make people feel like, yeah, you know, so, um, so my first verse, I know we changed it a little bit on the recording. We may have to revisit that. I don't know, because I think, I think the first verse really sets a tone for making somebody really uncomfortable um, because it's so, it's so real. I'll try it for a key. <clears throat> Hush, little baby, don't you cry. Mama's gonna find her baby by and by. Won't let you lie out in the cold down some unhallowed road, undignified. Unhallowed road, undignified. Miss you, my baby. I miss your smile. Sit on your empty bed and we talk a while. I reach my hand out into space. Close my eyes to touch your face. My I'm denied. Touch your face, but I'm denied. Every night, it's the same old thing. Look out my window and I start to say, I wonder which direction that I just haven't tried. I howl, I moan, I weep, I weep, I cry. It's my unforgotten lullaby. Unforgotten lullaby My little baby It's turning cold Reach in the closet For your faded winter coat I pull it close To keep you warm Hold you inside my arms Every lot of In my arms, you're not alone. Every night, it's the same old thing. Look out my window and I start to sing. I wonder which direction that I just haven't tried. I have, I'm old, I wait. Unforgotten love, unforgotten love, my little baby. 
Where can you be? Every night I hear you cry out in my sleep. I sit up straight and listen close. Was that a man? Was that your ghost crying out for me? Was that your ghost crying out for me? Every night it's the same old thing. Look out my window and I start to sing. I wonder which direction and I just haven't tried. I howl, I moan, I weep, I weep, I cry. It's my unforgotten love. I Just Thank a, you. Just a beautiful um, song, songwriting, and and I guess that's what I appreciate about you know what you bring to the table as a songwriter. You know, you traveled all down these roads as a native woman with dignity and integrity and respect and love and you come here with these beautiful songs you know like a, a treasure to canada and uh, north america so really uh, thank, thank you, you for bringing it. <laughs> thank you that's really humbling you know it's humbling because i feel like um oftentimes i don't know i think you might feel the same kind of responsibility i'm not sure what the creator uh, put me here for in terms, what is it that I want to say? And oftentimes I feel like I wish I could write these sweet, lovable songs that people, you know, walk up and sing and feel wonderful about, but I seem to be uh, <laughs> given the task of writing these things that make people feel a little bit more comfortable. But if that's my role, that's what I'll do. I think you got a great metaphysical approach to lyrics and things where uh, you can make people feel like it belongs to them. You know, the lyrics and the songs and the point of view of a song, you know, the point of view um, is always where the light comes, you know, like if you can see Phyllis in my room, I'm at, there's a point of view over here. Um, but really what I have, it was over here, I'll show you what it is. Sure. Ah. And so I think this is a subtleness, you know, of, of mm -hmm. uh, metaphors and of songwriting and, and of the creator's way, I think, is a very subtle way that we can reflect and we can, um, and uh, I guess, uh, imitate the, the creator's words and things like that. And wow, yes. you're doing it today. And any, any uh, advice you give to young women and young guys out there? Um, anything you'd like to say? Well, I always, I always say that um, believe in yourself. That's a tough one, you know, to believe in yourself when uh, oftentimes we find ourselves in situations that are difficult, you know, to really believe in yourself and, and trust, trust the guidance of a power that is greater than you, like the creator. Um, because if you live humbly and you allow yourself to believe in yourself and to walk a road that is a tough one, to stay on the, in the light, you will be led to some beautiful, beautiful things. So stick with it. That's all I can say. You know, I was <clears throat> raised in an Aboriginal community too, and we had our struggles just like everybody else. And I had one person, like I shouldn't say one person, my mother believed in me, but my mother struggled with alcoholism. And uh, so I was raised by my mother and my grandmother and my grandmother never touched a drop of liquor and I watched her and I had her in my life to really, um, she, she didn't tell me what to do, but she just the way she lived, you know, I knew that she believed in me 
And through all my life, it's really funny. I never really wanted to disappoint my grandmother. <clears throat> so in everything I do, I, I kind of feel like if I say a cuss word, oh, Granny wouldn't like that. I would, you know. <laughs> You know, but um, yeah, it's not easy. It's not an easy road, but you got to believe it. And if you're an aspiring musician too, you know, don't give up on your stuff. And the stuff that you're going through is probably going to lead you to write some really important music. I'm just going to go back to Unforgotten Lullaby for a moment. The reason why I felt why I wrote the song that I, the way that I wrote it is because, you know, this is not a pity party. It's just to show how, um, when you experience some things in life, you can use them to your advantage and, and to make your writing more sweet. I lost a son when he was 17 in a, in a car accident. And I remember uh, the years following that, it was really hard. Like I would often wake up from a lucid dream thinking that I could actually touch him. You know, it's like, oh, he's back, you know, but he wasn't, wouldn't be there. And so in Unforgotten Lullaby, you know, I talk about sitting on the bed and uh, reaching out and wanting to touch a face, but it's not there, I'm denied, you know, the physical touch of the, of the person. So using my experience, my grief experience to take to, oh, I'm gonna get emotional here, to take to the grieving parents of these missing and murdered Aboriginal women, I, I hope I can do that. And the best way that I can do that is to take my own experience and share it with them and know that uh, I understand that pain. The difference is, I had closure and these people still don't. And that's, that's the sad thing in this. And that's why we have to keep working at it. I appreciate the, um, the words and reaching out for people and, and giving us some, some uh, soothing. You know, that, that's <laughs> what we need, some, some mother ease. <laughs> yeah, mother ease. Well, I'm a grandma now, so no, not only do I have mothering behind me, I got grandmothering mm -hmm. behind me. <laughs> so, and I love it. I love it. It was a, a good visit with you today, and you know, like, and I, I appreciate you coming on. I know we're going to emerge out of this, everybody says it's going to be a different place, and I think it is too, but I think it's going to be a better place um, because I think, for me anyway, I think I've dropped a lot of the garbage that you don't need anymore. Like you don't really need to be running for the store, to the store for the latest pair of whatever, right? I think, I think it's kind of humbled us a little bit and we realize that there's more to us then we actually gave ourselves credit for and we're going to come out of this i think stronger that's that's my hope <laughs>